Darkman Short Room Review. Peyton Westlake has a great girlfriend, and he's a scientist on the verge of a breakthrough in synthetic skin. One day, however, mobsters break into his lab and burn off his hands and melt off his face in chemicals. He is left for dead and awakens to find that doctors have dulled all the pain so that he can stand all these severe burns on his body and in return he has gone insane. Comic book logic, don't, don't try to question it. And he now has these sudden surges of adrenaline that make him considerably stronger and probably faster, though I'm not entirely sure if they actually say that or not. He becomes Dark Man using his synthetic skin to infiltrate the mobsters and wreak revenge, as well as try to cope with what was done to him and try to find out if he can, at some point, be with his girlfriend again. Because the synthetic skin works, but only for 99 minutes, and then it melts really nasty looking. This was Sam Raimi's big superhero comic book movie. He couldn't get the rights for any existing comic books, so he made one up, drawing on the both the look and themes of old universal horror monster classic, classic monster movies. He created this character with gauze on his face, similar to the Invisible Man, and using this, these ideas of the misunderstood monster, the one who wants to be a part of the world of regular people, but can't because of the way he looks and other attributes to him. The gothic look is really effective, very terrifying, and it really comes through in the great sets. And the movie in general just looks great. You can really tell that it's Bill Pope as of the Matrix, all three movies, who did the cinematography. And just, yeah, every single shot in this movie is interesting in some way. It also moves really, really fast. It's 86 minutes long, and for the duration, it keeps moving. Something is always happening. The acting is really great. Frances McDormand portrays the girlfriend. Peyton Westlake is Liam Neeson, who does really good as both this sort of nice guy scientist and the later much more dark, dark man. And he, the, the way he uses his voice to intimidate is really effective. And of course we also need a good rogues gallery. Excuse me. Larry Drake does a fantastic job underplaying the main mobster Robert G. Durant. He has this, he clearly is a vicious son of a bitch, but a lot of it is sort of underneath, under the surface, so you really feel like you just, you are terrified of this guy. And because of how understated the performance is, when he actually raises his voice, it's all the more terrifying, because you've seen what he does without raising his voice. The action is great, really fast, and just, and, and in general, the movie really keeps surprising you with some great twists to a pretty well thought out plot. The effects 
generally hold up quite well. The, the movie has aged really well for being 22 years old. However, there is one scene near the climax, near the end of the movie, which you, you can tell how they did the various effects. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.